All right, I thank you. I am delighted to be here in my former hometown. Like she said, we lived here for a year, uh, for a decade. My husband grew up here, and I still have lots of relatives here. And I'm delighted that you're out on this typical January winter night. If you're like me, you just need to get out of the house. And fortunately, the roads were not an issue like they were in Van Buren County Sunday night. Yes. Anyway, um, you all have samples of the book. Uh, it's in two volumes, Upper Peninsula and a Lower Peninsula volume. When it was first published, it was a single volume that sold for $50. That publisher went out of business, so I had to find a second publisher. He lowered the price $5. Uh, divided it into two volumes, Lower and Upper Peninsula. So the two volumes are now, and it's the exact same book. It's the exact same book that was a single volume, but now it's two volumes and it's $45 plus tax. Anyway, um, I worked on and off for nine years on this book. I probably have five to 6,000 hours into the book. I had a vision and a passion, and I just couldn't let it go. And toward the end, when I knew I wanted to finish the book, but I knew I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to finish the book and get the pictures for the book. So I ended up partnering with the Michigan Foundation for Agriculture, with Michigan Farm Bureau, and they, uh, they, they've got people all over the state, and I knew Farm Bureau people all over the state. And so they helped that one summer getting at least half of the pictures that are in the book. And consequently, I split half the profits with the Michigan uh, Foundation for Agriculture because I couldn't have done it without them. Um, so, you know, I want you to, hey, look, you're in this book. It doesn't matter where you live work, play, visit, we've got that county covered. There's no other book like it that treats every county equally. I, I live in Eaton County. Do we ever show up in anybody's tour guide book? <laughs> Absolutely not. But I think we're important. And I truly believe that every county has a story to tell. And we tell that story by using these A to Z categories, no matter where you turn in the book, every county is going to have these headings. And whatever information is available about these various headings, <coughs> excuse me, I've included that. I used over 90 resources per book. So it's not like you can click on Kalamazoo County or Kalamazoo and find all the information in the book because I put it together from 90 different sources. So I have four different presentations. Tonight you're getting the flagship presentation, the 60 minute presentation on every county is unique. So in just a few minutes, I'm gonna start telling you a story about every county in Michigan. Uh, my, uh, my other, another presentation is uh, Michigan from A to Z. Using these A to Z categories, I give you information about Michigan. I have both a 60 minute and a 30 minute presentation for those that don't have a lot of time for a speaker. And then I've just developed a new presentation and it's also the, the 30 minute A to Z presentation, but it's also combined with, I call it my um, continuing education version. It's for those professional orga organizations that need continuing education credits. And some organizations have um, considered it continuing education because what I do is I teach those professional people how to use the book to develop a uh, a relationship with brand new clients. So you got somebody coming down from uh, Montmorency County. What do you know about Montmorency County? <laughs> you know, this guy walks into your office and, and so anyway, using the book, 
<coughs> we teach people how to use the book in order to establish a relationship with those folks. So anyway, let's get started. You all should all have one of these. I want you to turn to the county map side. And I'm going to be starting up here at number one in Keweenaw County. And I'm going to be going across and down so that you can follow along. Because when I get to Ontonagon County, you might not know where it's at. So you can just follow along as I tell my little stories. So let's get started. Now, county number one, way at the tip of the uh, Upper Peninsula, is Keweenaw County. Did you know that Keweenaw County is the Upper Peninsula's Upper Peninsula? Ha! Huh, take a look at that. And, excuse me, Keweenaw County contains the world's oldest lava flow. I mean, we all know about the copper in Keweenaw County, but that copper came from lava, which means at some point there had to be volcanoes. And that lava turned into 97% uh, pure copper. All right, number two, here's the famous Ontonagon County. That is not a geometry term. Did you know that in Ontonagon County, it is covered by 89% forest. And it is the number one county for forest cover in Michigan. Did you know that in Houghton County, the city of Hancock has street signs printed in English and Finnish. Yes, Finnish, close, but Finnish, because it is the Finnish capital of the United States. Did you know that in Baraga County, it has the most days below zero, with an average of 43 days a year. Now that's one of the stats that you can find in the book on every county, is how many days a year they average below zero and above 90 degrees. But anyway, let's remember Baraga with 43, because I'm going to be referring to that in a few more counties. Did you know that in Marquette County, the phrase, go west, young man, said by Horace Greeley in the late 1800s, Horace Greeley from New York, actually referred to the copper and iron mines of the Western UP. They weren't talking about Montana and California. They were talking about Michigan. Go west, young man. Did you know that in Alger County, the city of Grand Marais receives an average of 300 inches of snow per year? Now that's pretty average for the Lake Superior shoreline area and Grand Marais <coughs> is one of the major cities right there on Lake Superior. I mean, you know in Kalamazoo, it doesn't matter if it's lake effect or not, you still have to shovel it. <laughs> Did you know that in Lewis County, Taquamanon Falls is the second largest waterfall east of the Mississippi? It's 200 feet wide and 48 feet tall. Now, What's number one? Niagara, of course, but we're number two. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did you know that in Chippewa County, the Sioux locks are the busiest locks in the world, with 10,000 ships a year in its nine month shipping year going through those locks? I have tried to, it's what, it's what its website says. I can't make the numbers work. <laughs> but that's what they say, okay? So I got to go with it. All right, we're moving in number nine. The typewriter swings, and we're starting again on the left-hand side. Number nine is Gogebic County. Did you know that it has more waterfalls than any other county in Michigan with 33 waterfalls? I have a friend one year. They took their trailer to the UP and they went to every waterfall in the UP. She said by the time she got done, she didn't want to see another waterfall. <laughs> Did you know that in Iron County, 
It is the home to the, listen to this, world's oldest living organism, the 38-acre underground edible honey mushroom. Yes, yes. I was at a show one time, and of course, anybody who looks at the book, immediately they open it to their hometown, where they're from. So there was some lady, and she was from Iron County, and she was looking at that, and she said, I did not know that. She says, I've seen those mushrooms, but I didn't know what they were. And there's a picture, and, a, and I've got a little article on them in the book. Did you know that in Dickinson County, it is the birthplace of co coaches Tom Izzo from Michigan State, Steve Mariucci, formerly of the Lions, and they went to high school together, and they were roommates at Northern Michigan University. I think that's pretty cool, both of them being becoming so prominent. Where's the, where's the football coach at now? I do not know that. I do not know that. Somebody says that he's probably scouting or playing, doing something. I don't know. I'll have to Google it. I said that to him because he doesn't Google. Um, did you know that in Menominee County, it was part of the great Peshtigo firestorm of 1871 that burned a million and a half acres and killed 2,500 people, and it was the largest fire disaster in U.S. history. Does your library have the book Firestorm? It's about the Peshtigo fire, firestorm. I read it years ago. And then I visited Menominee, and right across the fall of the river is Marionette, Wisconsin. And in Marionette, they have a museum about the great firestorm. And guess what? This museum has no artifacts. Everything burned up. It just has dis recreated displays. 1871, and if you think about it, what was going on was that people were clearing land. Cut down the trees, cut off the branches, take out the roots, and how do you take out the roots? You burn them. Happened to be an extremely dry year, and there was a, so everything was, ten, was t tender, ready to be burned, and a big wind came in from the west and just, set the existing fires, just blew them and everything exploded. It, it was quite frightening. All right, did you know that in Delta County, the Garden Peninsula is called the banana belt of the UP? Now, obviously, they don't grow any bananas <laughs> in Delta County, but it's warmer than any other place in the UP because it's the peninsula and it sticks down into Lake Michigan, even though it's the UP, and it keeps it warmer than any other place. It also happens to be the number one county for barley. Did you know that in barley? school, barley, mm -hmm. obviously, I don't know that much about it, but barley's got to be a cool weather crop for it to grow, even though it's in the banana bill. Did you know that in Schoolcraft County, it was named after Henry Schoolcraft. Now, he named nine Michigan counties using imitation sounding names, Indian sounding names, by combining words and syllables from Latin, Arabic, and Native American languages. So, what counties did he name? Those counties that you always thought were Indian names? Alcona. Allegan, Alpena, Aranac, Iosco, Kalkaska, Leelana, Oscoda, and Tuscola. All made up names. And, and your school, school craft, just south of here, was named after the same man. All right, did you know that in Mackinac County, a million visitors a year take the ferry to Mackinac Island? And this helps the Mackinac area become the number one tourist destination in Michigan. Just as an aside, my husband went to a meeting yesterday where one of the men from the Grand Hotel was the speaker. The Grand Hotel had their best year ever. 
They were, for 75% of the year, they were 100% sold out of rooms. And my husband says to me, guess which rooms sell out the fastest? I said, oh, the ones that overlook the bridge. No, nope. the most expensive rooms sell out the, the quickest. I went, wow, there's got to be a lot of people with more money than I have to spend. <laughs> Okay, and we're leaving the UP and we're going down to the Lower Peninsula in Emmett County, number 16. Now listen to this. Did you know that Emmett County, way up north, averages only one day a year below zero? And that's the lowest in Michigan. Now that's the county average. Because except for the village of Pelston, and it averages 40 days a year below zero. But the county average is only one. When you, when you read about Pelson, it kind of sits down in a bowl. And it's got something to do the way the winds come off the lake and circle around and drop down, and that keeps it the coldest place in Michigan. Did you know that in Sheboygan County, which is home to downtown Mackinac City, it's an important part of the Tri-County Mackinac Bridge area and is the seventh most popular driving destination in the U.S. Hmm. How about that, huh? Seventh mo most popular in Michigan, seventh most driving. Now, I guess somebody makes a distinction between places you fly into versus driving into. I don't know, but we're the seventh for driving. Did you know that in Presqu'ile County, it has the highest population of people of Polish descent with 27%. And I read that in my research and I said, oh, excuse me, no way. I grew up in Wayne County. Everybody was either Italian, Polish, or redneck. Now, I was on the redneck side. I only married a Dutchman. And I went, no way. Right now, Wayne County only has 8% Polish. And the state average is 9%. And, um, and Presqu'ile has 27%. I know when I left Wayne County and came to Western to go to college, uh, for those of you that are my age, you remember we used to, well, at least in Wayne County, we used to tell Polish jokes all the time. And they were funny, even the Polish people told Polish jokes. Well, I come to Kalamazoo, and they're telling Dutchman jokes. It's the same jokes, but they're using Dutchman, and I didn't even think it was funny. Because, you know, in order to appreciate humor, you have to have a point of connection. And at that time, I had no points of connection with Dutchman. Okay, uh, back over to uh, number 19, Charlevoix County. Uh, in Charlevoix County, the Charlevoix Public Schools own the Beaver Island Light Station, and they're the only school district in the state that owns a lighthouse. And you know what they do with it? Exactly! It's their alternative education center. And the kids can't escape. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> You're the only person that's ever known the answer to that question. Good for you. Uh, number 20, Leelanau County. Did you, uh, you probably did know this, that it is number one for sweet and tart cherries, plums, prunes, and ryegrass seed. And at last count, it had 25 wineries. You can get on a bus and take a tour and drink your way through the wineries. Did you know that in Antrim County, it is home to Torch Lake and Elk Lakes, and they are the deepest and most beautiful lakes in Michigan. Anybody ever see them? Oh my gosh, it's hard to believe. The colors, the turquoise, the, the depth of the color in those lakes, it's unlike truly any other place you've ever seen. It is beautiful. You need to drive by in Antrim County. Did you know that in Otsego County, the city of Gaylord is called the Alpine City 
Back in the 1930s, one man built some buildings in the Swiss chalet style. Then in the 1960s, the Chamber of Commerce encouraged the, uh, uh, business people in the city to adopt the Swiss theme to help increase tourism. And guess what? It worked. I mean, you get off the highway and you go, oh my gosh, look at this, all these buildings. You might not be able to say, this is Swiss chalet style, but you know it's got that general Alps look to it, and it has worked. Did you know that in Montmorency County, it is the home to the largest wild elk herd east of the Mississippi? Now, the elk actually roam wild in, in a five-county area right up here, and Montmorency County is in the center of it, and Atlanta in Montmorency County calls itself the elk capital of Michigan. Now, and, of course, they have some parks that have elk on display, so you can't actually see them. Personally, I've never seen a wild elk. Uh, did you know that in Alpena County, it has the largest cement plant in North America, the Lafarge North American Cement Plant. Fortunately, it's right there on the lake, which makes it the largest, so it's easy access to um, uh, uh, mine that limestone, get it ground down into, into cement, and get it shipped off. Number 25, Benzie County. Benzie County is the home to the largest fish hatchery east of the Mississippi. They stock the Great Lakes with approximately 3 million salmon a year. Now, I'm not a fisherman. I didn't know much about that, so I had to do a little research. So as those wonderful salmon get to reproduction age, the females obviously, then they come and they swim up the river to the place where they were, were hatched, okay? They lay their eggs, and then they die. Well, what the DNR does, in that process of swimming up the river, they capture the salmon, they cut out the eggs, and then the salmon's going to die anyway. And then they take those eggs, and they raise them in these hatcheries to restock the Great Lakes. It's a much more efficient process than letting nature do it uh, on her own. Now, what happens to all those dead fish? Can you imagine what a mess that would be? Yes, it's turned into pet food. Yeah, so nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. It was all used. Um, did you know that in Grand Traverse County, Interlochen was the first Michigan State Park. Now we identify Interlochen with the music camp, but there's also a state park there. And Interlochen means? Between two lakes. Yes, exactly, between the lakes. Enter between lock and lakes. I thought D.A. State was the first state park in Michigan. I just read that. Well, I, I, would I would have to look that up because in my research they said Interlochen was. But I, I know the name DH. Where is the Day State Park? I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, okay. Well, we'd have to, I'd have to Google it and do some more research. <laughs> Did you know that in Kalkaska County, it is world renowned for their blue ribbon trout streams and rainbow trout fishing. If you've ever driven through Kalkaska, you've seen that wonderful rainbow trout statue that they have right there in front of City Hall. And people come from around the world to go fishing in Michigan trout streams. That's how good they are. Speaking of, did you know that in Crawford County, it is the only place in the world where you can find the flat bottom, wide beam, side-poled, 
a Sabo river boat. And you can fly fish from these boats. Now, years ago, excuse me, years ago, I went on a, uh, a flat, uh, flat bottom boat ride one, on the Osabo River. I didn't realize how unique it was when I did it, but they don't use motors, they don't use oars, they just pull it, because the Osabo's not very deep. So they just pull it along. Well, so the guy was giving me fly fishing lessons. I had never fly fished. Well, let me tell you, by the end of the trip, that guide was so irritated at me <laughs> because I could not get that flick of the wrist that it takes. No, no, I couldn't get it. And he was quite irritated at me. And it's the last time I've been on that kind of boat ride, but it, it was pleasant in itself. Um, did you know that in Oscoda County, the 58 mile Jack Pine Wildlife Viewing Tour in the Huron National Forest alongside of the Osabo River is an absolutely must see and, and do when you're in Mayo. Every few miles they have informational placards that tell all about the, uh, the flora and the fauna of the area. Very, very, very pretty drive and educational. Did you know that in Alcoa County there is only one traffic light in the whole county. Now, the largest city is only 500 people. So you can see why they might have only one traffic light. I used to have a friend, he lived up in Nobbin Way in the UP. That's about 45 minutes from the bridge. And he taught driver's ed. And he would bring his driver's ed students from Nobbin Way to St. Ignace, across the bridge and into Mackinac City so they could experience a traffic light. <laughs> uh, number 31, Manistee County. During the 1880s, Manistee had more millionaires per capita than anywhere else in the world, or in the US, excuse me, in the US. So how did those millionaires in Manistee make their money? Lumber, yes. And it's quite surprising, it surprised me when I, as I was doing my research, there are actually quite a few Michigan cities, including some in, in, uh, in the Thumb area and, thumb, and some more up north than what Manistee is, that were at one time or another had more millionaires per capita than any other place in the United States. So, I mean, lumber, lumber was huge for Michigan. Did you know that in Wexford County, it is the home to the Shea locomotive, a narrow gauge and vertical piston engine that revolutionized lumbering in the 1880s. So when I was doing my research, it said that used to be they only cut lumber in the winter for two reasons. One, the ground was frozen, so thing, they could move things around easy, and two, there was no mosquitoes. So. After Mr. Shea invented his narrow gauge uh, locomotive, which allowed uh, the rail lines to go right into the forest. So they didn't have, to, you've seen the pictures of those mammoth stacks of lumber that they would release into the rivers and streams. I mean, it did a lot of damage to rivers and streams. Anyway, the, um, the locomotive could go right into the forest and they could load it right on to the, uh, train cars, and so they were able to cut lumber year-round. But they never said anything about the mosquitoes. Now, I don't know about you, where you live, but where I live in Eaton County, last year was our worst mosquito year ever. And I'm sure it wasn't nearly as bad as what it used to be in the forests a hundred years ago. Um, did you know that in Masaki County, it is the number one county for Christmas trees with over 9,000 acres of Christmas trees. Now it is a joy to drive through Misaki County. You see all these trimmed Christmas trees in various sizes, just waiting to go home with somebody to be the delight of their Christmas season. Now I should give credit that there are Christmas trees grown in every county in Michigan except for Wayne County. Where? Wayne. No Christmas trees in Wayne County. But, so that means there's some in some place in Kalamazoo. 
Did you know that in Roscommon County, you can see bald eagles as you go north on US 127? Now, I know that when you guys go north, you're probably not going up 127. From, our, from my perspective, in Lansing, we go up 127, and you're tooling along, and over on the right is this stand of trees. Here's a tree, there's a tree. They aren't close. They're just kind of spread out, and they all got trash in the top of the trees. Kind of looks like trees after a flood, but that's not trash. That's the eagle's nests. And although I have yet to see an eagle going in and out of the nest, for many times as I've passed it, those are the eagle's nests. Um, did you know that in Ogemaw County, it is ORV, off-road vehicle, it is ORV friendly, allowing ORVs on all streets and highways in the county. Now why would they do that? Tourism, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And guess what? It's worked, because they're the number one ORV county. Did you know that in Iosco County, Michigan named the city of Oscoda. Now, the city of Oscoda is not in Oscoda County. It's in Iosco County. Michigan named the city of Oscoda the official home of Paul Bunyan because the first stories about him were published there in 1906. Now, to be fair, there's lots of other cities, and even some in Europe, that claim parts of the Paul Bunyan legend and story. But, thank you very much, we were first. Number 37, Mason County. Did you know that the Ludington Pumped Storage Plant is one of the world's largest electric batteries. Now when it was built, I believe in the 60s by Consumers Power, it was the world's largest electric battery. And what they do is they, during the night, they pump water out of Lake Michigan and store it in their tanks. And then during the day when they need the electricity, they let the water go, it goes over the turbines and it creates electricity. And that's why it's considered an electric battery. Did you know that in Lake County, it has more cottages than any other county with 62% of the homes in that county being part-time or rental houses. Now I think, how appropriate that the county named Lake <laughs> has more cottages than any other county. It also happens to be the poorest county in the state. Did you know that in Osceola County, it has many artesian wells? Artesian wells are when water just bubbles out of the ground. They're so desirable that they're even mentioned in home for sale ads. And there's even one, a city up there in Osceola County that is considered the, um, uh, what's the word I want? The center, oh, well, I've forgotten the word, getting old, of Artisan Wells. So it's, that's a very desirable feature up there. Okay, did you know that in Clare County, their motto, up north begins here. Now, when you're going up north, do you go through Clare from here? Okay. Well, then you know you got your Clare Welcome Center, which is beautiful. And then within just a couple miles after that, that's where the north begins because everything changes. The way they make the roads changes, the shrubbery changes, the trees change. Everything is different. And what is the number one predominant factor that distinguishes the north from the south? That's a, that's a sub heading under the main heading. What? Not the weather, that's a, again a sub under the main. It's the soil. The difference in the soil is what does it all. Much more sand in the soil. Where down here in the agriculture area, we've got topsoil. Up there, 
They have sand, a lot of it. Uh, did you know that in Gladwin County, it is the thermal forming capital of the world? Now, if you don't know what the thermal forming capital is, you'll just have to look it up in the book. <laughs> did you know that in Aranac County, you can stay overnight in a lighthouse that has been converted to a bed and breakfast? Now, I have that on my bucket list. I'm going to stay there one of these years because it sounds really cool. And of course, the information is in the book. You just look it up in Aranac County. And right there, under probably, probably under L for lighthouses, it'll talk about um, that bed and breakfast. All right, number 43, Oceana County. Did you know that the sand dunes of Silver Lake are the only sand dunes east of Utah that allow vehicle traffic. Now, you know, we all grew up going on Mac dunes, dune rides and taking your truck over the dunes or whatever. We just accept that as, well, let's just do it. Well, it's like they said, the only place east of Utah where that's allowed. On the other hand, where else are there sand dunes? Well, you know, that's, it, yeah. Colorado's still east of Utah, isn't it? But it's the only place. We're the only place. Okay. Um, did you know that in Nuevo County, all three of the state historical markers talk about how hydroelectrical power fueled Michigan's early economic growth here and throughout the state? Hydroelectrical power is electricity provided by water yes and, and you, they've got several dams up there and because of all the streams and lakes in Michigan and those were able to be harnessed through dams and 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 such and and, and mills uh, with the turning uh, power wheels that helped establish Michigan as a great the beginning of the wealth that established us as the great manufacturing state that we are did you know that in Macosta County, it is the tubing capital of Michigan on the Muskegon River? Who's ever been tubing on the Muskegon? Ever been to Cran Hill? Tubed on from the river from Cran Hill? Okay. Uh, had, had a child at Ferris? Went tubing? Went to Ferris. Did you go tubing on the river? <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, did you know that in Isabella County, when you, okay, the Saginaw Chippewa tribe owns over 138,000 acres with 2,000 Native Americans in the county, and the tribe is the county's largest employee. Now, employer. Now, that kind of surprised me because um, Isabella County is Central Michigan University. And you also think of Isabella County and, and Big Rapids, um, not Big Rapids, Mount Pleasant, yes, Mount Pleasant. What do you think about when you think about Mount Pleasant? Casino. Soaring Eagle Casino, yes. And that, of course, is owned by the Indians also. And they, they own a lot of different businesses, uh, which means that at, with 2,000 uh, 2, Native Americans, they are a larger employer than Central Michigan University. Did you know that in Midland County, it was the salt wells that brought Herbert Dow to Midland? Now, Herbert Dow, I believe, was from Ohio. He graduated from college in chemistry, and he was touring the Midwest, testing salt wells for bromine. So at the turn of the century, bromine was used in pharmaceuticals, and in uh, developing of, of photographs. And the best quality bromine was in the salt wells in Midland. And you know the rest of the story. He started Dow Chemical right there in Midland. Did you know that in Bay County, it has a corn fest, a sunflower festival, a pumpkin festival, a pig gig, a wine walk, 
a national pickle festival, a potato festival, and a cheese town festival. Now, don't you just love that about Michigan? <laughs> we always have all these food festivals. Did you know that in Huron County, it takes three to five pounds of sugar beets to make one tablespoon of sugar? Now, if you've, ever, if you've never seen a sugar beet, it looks like a large, ugly rock, okay? So it goes through, it takes three to five pounds of those ugly rocks, and they cook them and mash them and um, uh, get out the sugar. And then, so they get their one tablespoon of sugar. What do they do with all that leftover cooked, mashed sugar beets? Yes, it becomes pig food. Again, nothing goes to waste. Uh, number 50, Muskegon County. Of the, th of the uh, 36 National Historic Landmarks in Michigan, Muskegon County has two of them, the SS Milwaukee Clipper and the USS Silversides, and they are both open for tours. Anybody ever been? Yes, very interesting. Did you know that in Montcalm County, it is the number one county for acres and revenue of all vegetables, honeys, honey, and potatoes. I was shocked. I did not know that Montcalm County was that big in agriculture. Certainly, I knew they were big in potatoes, but I had no idea that they were the number one for all vegetables and honey, which kind of makes sense because if you've got all those vegetables, you've got to have something... Um, pollinating all those vegetable plants. So there's the bees and the honey. Did you know that in Gratiot County, in the 1870s, it was nationally famous for magnetic mineral baths. Now, there were mineral baths all over southern Michigan. That was not uncommon. But the water in Gratiot County actually was tested and had magnetic quality to the water. And there was a lot of fabulous cures that were related to that water. And for 50 years, it was a very big resort area. Did you know that in Saginaw County, it is the only county with no inland lakes. So there's one in Michigan. Um, but they have, but they do have the Saginaw River watershed, which is the largest in the state, and that provides an abundance of water activities. So they are not without their water. Did you know that in Tuscola County, it is the number two county for the production of dry beans, and Michigan is the number two state for dry bean production. So the question is, what's a dry bean? It's a navy bean. That's a fine example of a dry bean. A he said a navy bean. Yes. Yes, they are. But that's not the definition of a dry bean. That's true, but that's not the definition. This is not a trick question. <laughs> I asked myself this question. Why do they call them dry beans? Why don't they just call them beans? But they're not beans, they're dry beans. Why are they dry beans? Because they have no oil in them. So it's a dry bean versus a bean that has oil in it, like a soybean. Okay, a soybean is not a bean, it's a soybean, but the, all the rest, the pintos and the cranberries and the great northerns, those are all dry beans. Um, did you know that in Sanilac County, it is the home of the Sanilac petroglyphs, the only petroglyphs ever found in Michigan. You know petroglyphs, Indian carvings in limestone? Well, there was the Thumb area also had, in that same year as the Peshtigo fire, they also had some great fires in the thumb. And after one of those fires, the vegetation burned off this great, great rocky cliff, 
And lo and behold, here were the petroglyphs. They're part of the state park, and you can go see them. Uh, number 56, Ottawa County. Did you know that in Ottawa County, the Heinz Pickle Factory is the largest pickle factory in the world? So, if they've got the largest pickle factory in the world, what does that tell you? Exactly. Michigan, I do not know that. I have not been there. But it tells you that Michigan is the number one state for the production of pickling cucumbers. Now, what's the difference between a pickling cucumber and a salad cucumber? And you know this. No. <laughs> Good answer, but not the one for this one. Size is one thing. You know, if you go to the store and buy a cucumber to put in your salad, it's usually seven to nine inches long and it has a smooth skin. The pickling cucumbers generally have bumps on them. Yeah. Prickly. Yes, they are. They're, the stem is prickly and the, and, the, and the cucumber itself is prickly. So there's a lot of pickles being grown in Michigan. Pickling cucumbers. Did you know that in Kent County, it receives the most annual rainfall in Michigan at 38 inches a year. It's also the number one county for apples, so those apples really do appreciate all that rain. Did you know that in Ionia County, the city of Belding calls itself, called itself the Silk City of the World? and it was a major silk producer. Ha! Huh, whoever knew that about Michigan? Uh, they have a really nice museum in Belding about the uh, story of silk production in that area. Really nice little day trip. Did you know that in Clinton County is the site of the greatest school mass murder in the U.S.? In 1927, a man dynamited the school, burned his home and farm, then killed his wife and himself for a total of 44 dead. Now, I've talked to people from Bath, and that's the city, and they say that it has affected every generation since that time. Some of those people are still alive. They might have been a first grader at that time. Some of them are still alive. The rest of the story is, okay, he was a school board member. And he was a janitor at the school. And his farm was being foreclosed on. And the school was raising taxes. And so he planted dynamite in the school to get back at those people that he blamed for him losing his farm. Now, so 44 people were killed, but afterwards they found an additional 500 pounds of dynamite in the basement of the school that did not explode. So it could have been much, much worse. Did you know that in Shiawassee County, it is the epicenter of railroading history in Michigan? This is because there was a roundhouse there that connected all trains in Michigan. Now, you can still go to Duran today and get, anybody ever been to Duran and seen the railroads? They have a 360 degree roundhouse. And all trains in Michigan, you couldn't go from Chicago to Detroit. You had to go from Chicago to Duran to Detroit at one time. A lot of places had roundhouses, but not all roundhouses were 360 degrees. Some were only 180. So anyway, that's uh, Durand in Shiawassee County. Did you know that in Genesee County, it is second only to Wayne County for the number of memorial highways with 11 memorial highways. Most are veteran related, like the Veterans Memorial Highway, the American Legion Memorial Highway, the uh, United Spanish War Veterans Memorial Highway, Marine Corps League Memorial Highway, or disabled uh, Americans Veterans Highway. The rest are automobile related, like the Chevrolet Buick Freeway, 
the Lewis Chevrolet Freeway, the David Dunbar Buick Freeway, the UAW Freeway, and the UAW Sit-Down Strike Memorial Highway. <laughs> Now, my dad was part of that. I can remember him talking to me about that. And after I had already written the book, I was wandering around downtown Lansing uh, one day, and they had a local historical marker that, about Lansing's participation in the Flint sit-down strike. And I went, oh, how about that? <laughs> Did you know that in Lapeer County, it is the home to the only Fox and Hounds hunting venue in Michigan. They have a hundred square miles where they run the horses and the hounds chasing, chasing the fox. Now, they tell me that it's a non-blood sport, that the, that the dogs are trained not to kill uh, the foxes. There's a beautiful picture in the book of some man in full riding regalia. I, I didn't even know they did that in Michigan. Um, and it, it is beautiful, 100 square miles. And the, it's a winter sport from November through like March. So that's when they uh, run the horses. Did you know that in St. Clair County, the St. Clair River carries more freighter traffic than the Suez and Panama canals combined. So the Great Lakes freighter traffic going up through the Port Huron area of Michigan more than any place else in the world. Number 64, Allegan County. Did you know that Allegan County is the number one county for the market value of all agricultural products? It's huge. It has fruits, vegetables, floriculture, and livestock. And Ottawa County and Allegan County are always in competition to see who's going to come out number one. Well, at the last ag census, Allegan was on top. Did you know that in Barry County, the Gilmore Car Museum is the nation's premier automotive history destination? And I went, oh, excuse me. I grew up in Wayne County. I've been to the Henry Ford Museum. They have to be number one. Well, then I went to the Gilmore Car Museum. How many of you have been there? I hope all of you. Oh my gosh, it takes your breath away. Those cars are so beautiful and there's so many of them. I haven't been there since they built their new barns a couple years ago. So I gotta go back and get updated. Did you know that Eaton County, and that's where I've lived for the last 35 years? Um, we are the only county in Michigan and maybe the U.S. I've been told, but I haven't been able to verify that, with three county courthouses. The 1840s, the 1880s, and the 1870s. Most county courthouses either burned down or were torn down. But we're the only one that still has all three. Did you know that in Ingham County, I love this story, this is uh, uh, Lansing of course, when Lansing Township was chosen as the site for the new capital, there was no town, no roads to get there, and only eight people lived there. <laughs> Therefore, Lansing was a forest designed to be a capital city, not just a city designated as a capital. If you know anything about your Michigan history, you know that there are about 50 cities, all fighting, all wanting to be the capital of Michigan. And they chose a place that didn't even have a city in it. You know why? The land was free. <laughs> and it was centrally located. Did you know that in Livingston County, you can get that up north feeling by visiting the 50,000 acres of parks in this county, including the Island Lake Pickney and Brighton State Recreation Area. I personally think that state recreation areas are one of the best kept secrets in the state. Now I was down in Hamburg Township at a library uh, in Livingston County and I made that statement and they said, and yes, we want to keep it that way. <laughs> they didn't want people coming to the state parks in their county. Did you know that in Oakland County, it is the wealthiest county in Michigan. They have the highest family income, but it is also 
the number one county in the state for the sale of horses. Now, there are other counties that sell more horses than Oakland County, but the horses that sell in Oakland County sell for more than other horses. Did you know that in Macomb County, it has 8,500 boat slips, more than any other county. What they have is they have, uh, they have Lake St. Clair, then off of Lake St. Clair they have these little canals. And then people build their houses right on the canal so you can park your boat right in your backyard. So that's how they have 8,500 boat slips. Number 71, Van Buren County. Did you know that in Van Buren County, and of course you already know this, that there is one, a city called Pawpaw. There is also two, the Pawpaw fruit, that is a tropical custard apple that resembles a short, fat banana and grows wild on the back 40. There is also three, a person called Pawpaw. Anybody know who that is? Yes! Yes, Charlie Maxwell played for the Detroit Tigers from about 1958 through about 1963, but he spent his entire rest of his career with the Tiger organization, and he still lives in Papa. Uh, did you know that in Kalamazoo County, and I hope you know this, that it, you are the number one bedding plant producer in the United States? You know all those greenhouses you drive by? You are num number one county in the United States. Now, if you think big box stores like Lowe's or Menards, those kinds of big box stores, you go any place south, you go any place east of the Mississippi River, from here down to Florida, in the spring, and you know they've got all those wonderful bedding plants sitting out, in all probability, those came from Michigan and probably right out of Kalamazoo County. That's how big the greenhouse production is in Kalamazoo County. Did you know that in Calhoun County, it is the home to Battle Creek, which of course is called the Serial City. And in the early 1900s, right after the invention of dry cereal, there were 80 cereal companies in Battle Creek. Everybody trying to be the next big thing. Uh, kind of reminds me of Silicon Valley. You know, everybody mm -hmm. wanted to be the next big computer company. Did you know that in Jackson County, it is best known for prisons and as the birth of the Republican Party? And I'm not making any comments on that. <laughs> Did you know that in Washtenaw County, they may have Ann Arbor and the University of Michigan, but they also have more sheep, goats, llamas, and alpacas than any other county. Washtenaw is a huge egg county, surprisingly enough. Did you know that in Wayne County, the Detroit, Institutes, the Detroit Institute of Arts is on the list of 1,000 places to see before you die? Who's been there? It should be on your bucket list because it's one of those places that will take your breath away. I don't care if you like art or not. You just need to see it because it is beautiful. All right, our last tier of counties, number 77, Berrien County. Did you know that according to the scientists at Michigan State University, Berrien County has the most productive fruit growing environment in the world. Whoa! And of course, Barry, and because it's on the lake and it's a little south and it's beautiful, so there's always a huge pressure between maintaining the, the fruit uh, orchards and people wanting to build houses. So there's always that pressure. Did you know that in Cass County, in 1913, the now popular hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, was sung for the first time by the composer at a revival service there. There's also in Michigan three historic markers that talk about the Old Rugged Cross. 
Did you know that in St. Joseph County, it is the home to the longest covered bridge in Michigan? The Langley, excuse me, bridge was built in 1887. It's 282 feet long and you can still drive your car across it. You can't pull your trailer with your car, but you can drive your car. Did you know that in Branch County, it is the home to Great Lakes Glads. They are the number one producer of gladiolus in the United States. They grow lots and lots and lots of other different flowers also. Beautiful place to drive by in that area, Great Lakes Glads. You know, I can't remember. I've been there, but I, I can't remember the exact city. It's kind of out, not in a city because it's all acreage of flowers, but I don't, I don't remember. Um, did you know that in Hillsdale County, Hillsdale means hills and valleys. So you remember the song, over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail. Well, that's what they're talking about. Over hills and dales, over hills and valleys, they will take their caissons and go rolling along. Uh, did you know that in Lenaway County, it has more farms than any other county in Michigan with almost 1,700 farms. And over 70% of that county is being farmed. And last but not least, Monroe County. Did you know that in Monroe County, the muskrat is an important part of the culture of Monroe. They have muskrat statues. They have muskrat dinners. And I'll tell you the story. And this is because back in the early days of exploration of Michigan, uh, somebody, I mean, we've got priests involved, and somebody was writing about the flora and the fauna of Michigan, and they wrote back to probably Rome about the muskrat who lived in the water. Well, at some point, there was a severe famine in that area. And those people got permission from the Pope or from the Catholic Church to eat muskrat during Lent because if it lived in the water, it must be a fish. <laughs> so I end on that note.